Hello and welcome to this review of my Emath EM601 gaming keyboard. If you're looking at budget gaming keyboards, this is an alternative to those cheap $40 mechanical keyboards from China, such as the Lingbao I reviewed a while ago. This one is even cheaper at £25 with free postage, also from China by the way, and this particular one was a donation from one of my viewers who was interested in what I thought about it. So, what's the difference? And which is better? Well, let's start with the big elephant in the room. It's not actually mechanical. It's what's referred to in marketing speak as mechanical feel or mechanical like, which means it's higher quality rubber domes. But still, they try to cram in all features gamers might expect of it while still keeping costs as low as possible. Let's start with the build quality. It's um, all plastic. But in all fairness, I mean, it is relatively dense plastic. There's almost no flex in the case, and it feels remarkably taut. The keycaps are a bit exposed, as there is no rim on the case, but it's just rubber domes anyway, so it doesn't matter all that much. Of course, it's no match for the toughness of some of my older boards, but for £25, it's really not bad. There's also a certain resemblance to another line of keyboards on the market right now. See this little ridge at the bottom here, and the overall shape of the chassis? Yeah, I think I've seen that before. Can't complain though, because I think it's a fairly decent look. Not too outlandish, but still kind of funky. Of course, your mileage may vary on this. It doesn't have the black brushed aluminium top plate, but it's still not too bad. Many of the Chinese $40 boards, such as the Lengbao, do have a metal top plate, or they're plastic with metallic paint on it. The keycaps are pretty standard, they appear to be painted and then laser ablated ABS caps, pretty common on backlit keyboards nowadays. They're very thin and pretty cheap really, and they have almost no texture. A bunch of them have already started to shine up as well. These laser ablated ABS caps tend to not last all that long before the light starts to bleed through either. Also, because of the rubber dome mount stem, the lighting is a bit uneven throughout the letters, like on the nav cluster, and on some keys, the light doesn't come through all that well, such as on the tilde key. Overall, this is one area where the cheapness of the keyboard really shows, I think, but what I kind of like about them is that the letters are in the middle of the keycaps, and it doesn't use one of those ridiculous sci-fi fonts that so many gaming boards seem to have. The spacebar squeaks a bit sometimes, not always, only if you hit it hard and in a specific place, I think it's about here. Now for the features, as you'd expect of a keyboard that markets itself towards gamers, there's several. It's got a win lock, basically a way to lock up the Windows key so you don't accidentally get pulled out of your game. Very standard stuff nowadays. There's a bunch of multimedia keys, which are all on the F row keys, standard but kind of useful concave keys surface for fast fingertip response. In other words, they're cylindrical, kind of scraping the barrel there a little bit, guys. <laughs> and 19 keys anti-ghost, as they call it. Now, I've made several comments before on how anti-ghosting is really just an empty marketing term and people really shouldn't pay any attention to it. And here's a great example of why. So what most people would take away from this is that it has 19 key rollover, right? So you can press at least 19 keys at the same time and they'll all register perfectly. But no, this is a standard membrane keyboard setup, remember? It's got two key rollover. What they mean is that they drew the trace matrix in such a way that keys around the WASD cluster don't conflict with each other, so it won't affect gaming too much. But, as I'll show you, press Q, W, and O at the same time, and only the Q and W will register, not the O, so it's still limited to just two keys with some combinations. And this is what you get when you introduce misleading terms like anti-ghosting, which in its actual meaning has nothing to do with rollover at all. It's also got backlighting, and as with Lingbao, it's a relatively cheap type, but the execution is different. The Lingbao had a bunch of different patterns and colors, but only one color per switch and row, so it was actually six color monochrome. It looks funky, but it's not full RGB or anything, quite the opposite. This one does have a bunch of different colors, seven in total, none of which show up particularly well on my camera. Red, blue, green, 
purple, a kind of radioactive green that I think is supposed to resemble yellow, a very dark cyan, and not actually white. But there's only two patterns, static and breathing. Now, I have a bunch of boards with different kinds of backlighting, including several really impressive full RGB ones, and I have to admit that this is actually one of the better ones I've seen, despite what the camera might show. Sure, there's basically no patterns, but while patterns look cool, <laughs> they're actually super distracting. Sure, there's no RGB, but the colors are blended together perfectly, and the ones that are there look really nice. What sets these colors apart is how dark they look. This is at full brightness, and there's not that much light coming out, but the colors are really deep, much more than my camera gives it credit for. The red looks super evil and menacing, the blue is just gorgeous, the green is pure venom, the purple is, well, purple isn't really my favorite color, the puke green is, okay, not all colors are great, but the red, green, and blue are really nice. Normally I don't really see the point of backlighting, but maybe because there are so few bells and whistles on this one, I really don't mind it too much. Red suits the chassis especially well, I found. So, the switches. How do these mechanical-like domes hold up? Well, let's get one thing out of the way. They're not mechanical-like. They're obviously rubber domes. But that's not the end of the world. Better a good rubber dome than a crappy mech, in my opinion. They are super tactile. I mean, really tactile. Snappier than BTCs, even. And way more tactile than Topra. They're definitely way above normal domes. And they're pretty nice, actually. And they're really loud, about as loud as BTCs. Here, listen to this. They're a lot bassier than BTCs. Not bad, actually. But they sound more muffled, more rubbery. BTCs don't even sound like rubber domes, probably because they're a dome with slider design. Let me compare the two real quick, side by side. So, they feel and sound pretty decent, but there's still two problems. First, they're noticeably stiffer than BTCs, and together with the extreme tactility, they hurt your fingers after a while. Second, because it's a standard rubber dome over membrane design, you still need to bottom out to register a key press, and the absence of this is, in my opinion, the advantage of Topra over other rubber domes. If you're used to mechs, this feels really clumsy and blunt, and on some of the bigger keys like the shift, although it's stabilized just fine, I don't smash it hard enough to bottom out. It's so bad that about half of my capital letters go missing when I'm typing on this. And that's honestly one of the biggest advantages of mechs that many people underestimate or forget about in my opinion. Even foam and foil switches didn't have this problem. So, concluding, a lot of mixed emotions then. Some things are good, some things are bad, but what stands out for me most of all is that they did a lot with very little, and every bit holds up in a way. No metal top plate, but built okay nonetheless. The keycaps are cheaply made, but they look pretty nice. The switches are too stiff, and you need to press them too far down, but the tactility in them is excellent. It only has two key rollover, but there won't be any input blocking in the gaming area nonetheless. And the backlighting is limited, but it looks really good despite that. So, really, it's not that great, but it's good enough. And honestly, for £25, I'd say that's all you can ask for, I think. Because for £10 more, you can have a mechanical Chinese keyboard instead, which I think is definitely worth the extra money. I can't really recommend this keyboard over that. But on its own, it's honestly not bad value for money. I also think it just looks better. The Ling Bao is just too try-hard and showy for me. Anyway, that's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.